Hey, this is Erica at Wholesale Design. We are going to give you some tips today on the best way to navigate Yellowstone. So let's get started. Okay, one of the things I wanna make sure you understand, and it was one of the things we were extremely naive about. Now, why, uh, Yellowstone is a very big place, and we came in through Wyoming. So there is a quaint, beautiful mountainous city south of Yellowstone called Jackson Hole. So when we came in through the south entrance, we came in through Nash, uh, Teton National State Park. Okay, so at the time, we didn't know that. We thought we were going into the gate. You paid your $35, they give you a map, they give you like this little paper, and guess what? It says Teton National Forest. Now my husband is sharper than attack, so he recognized, he was like, hey, this doesn't say Yellowstone. Absolutely. So at the south entrance, when you come in, you're not going into Yellowstone right away. You're actually entering another state park. Yellowstone is 27 to 28 miles from there. Now the scenery is amazing and you'll see some animals along the way, but you're not in the park yet, which means when you get to the park, you have to pay an additional $35 to get in the park or like us, just go ahead on and purchase the annual pass. Now the annual pass is uh, $70. So by paying the other $35, you're just pretty much might as well get the pass. I think we paid 80, I'm not quite sure why, but on the paper it says $70. I'll have to check into that. So yes, so you'll pay the additional funds and then you'll be in the park. So keep in mind, depending on the direction that you come in, you might be entering the park through a, another area that may not quite be Yellowstone just yet. So you just wanna make sure that you're going in, that you're going all the way into Yellowstone and not entering another park like we did. Like I said, even though Teton National Forest or National Park is amazing, it's still not the entrance to Yellowstone. Okay, let's get right into tip number two. One of the things I think Another thing I think we were naive about is the distance. Being that Yellowstone stretches across a couple states, it is really, really big. And I think we were under the assumption by watching others' videos that they, the, the little attractions were kind of close together, but they're not. So when we first got in, it was like an additional 22 miles to just Old Faithful, okay? So you wanna take a map, and map out your, your your plan of attack. So you can go on the website, you can look at the map on there. You can kind of figure out what it is you want to see first and start there because you don't want to end up at the top when you really need to be at the bottom. So we started at the south entrance and ended up at the west entrance. And so south is Wyoming, but west is Montana. So we had to circle around a little piece through Montana, back into Idaho, back into Wyoming. So you wanna make sure that you are planning out a sufficient route for your day. So if the one thing you wanna see is at the top of the map, I suggest that you go there first and work your way back to the entrance that's gonna be closest to where you wanna be at the end of your day. Okay, now I want you to prepare for the fact that COVID-19 is still happening even though we'd all wish it would kind of just dissolve and go away. So a lot of the restaurants either have an extremely long line to just get food and get out, or they're closed. So you wanna make sure that you pack some food, pack some water, and pack something to drink to bring with you. There are uh, picnic areas and designated spots, or you could just pull off and eat in your car, many places. But make sure that you, whatever you bring with you, you take with you, that you don't leave anything out there. We don't wanna bring harm to anybody else because there are wild animals out there and bears. And they're also looking for food. So we don't want to draw attention and maybe somebody else get hurt or the bears get hurt or vice versa. So we want to make sure we don't leave a carbon footprint in the park and we can leave it beautiful for everyone to come and visit. So tip number three, make sure you bring something to eat. Um, there are some gas station and some gift shops, but a lot of those restaurant and food places are closed. Even when we got gas, they don't really let you in. You have to stand outside in the line 
and wait to get in to get your gas. So just imagine the pumps filling up. So make sure you get your gas before you get there. Make sure you bring a lunch, put it in a cooler, bring some water, take your trash with you, but plan to have something to eat and not wait to get into park the park to find something to eat. Okay, and keep in mind that being that this is an outdoor place, a lot of people gather there because it is a family touristy vacation place. So when we went, there was a lot of people there and not everybody adheres to six feet apart. So if you have your mask, bring it. If you're one of those people who wear a mask, bring it. There will be spacious places where you may not need it, where you can give yourself some distance, but make sure that you're bringing something to cover yourself because there is a lot of people, there are a lot of crowds there. When we went, I can tell you every stop we stopped at was a lot, a lot, a lot of people. There was cars lining the road, everybody getting out, walking to the attraction. So just keep in mind that if you are nervous about crowds and things of that nature, make sure you bring your mask or whatever covering you're using along with you for the big crowded areas. And my very last tip is have fun. They have such amazing views. Take a second, stop, stare, drink it in because it is just amazing. If you get to see some animals in their natural habitat, that is beautiful. Even though some of the, the signs say, you know, be careful, you can't walk here, you can't go there. What you're allowed to see is just absolutely amazing. I believe that everyone should at least once experience the whole entire park. And that was another thing we were naive about how big it was. You need about a week to just somewhat enjoy the park and be able to hit all the attractions and all the scenery to really be able to appreciate it. It is definitely not something you're gonna be able to do in one or two days. You're gonna definitely need time. And time is important because of the simple fact of people, lots of people. So make sure that you're carving out enough time so you can really enjoy it. You probably are driving very far for days to get there, to walk up to one of their amazing waterfalls, take a selfie, turn around, get back in your car, and drive to the next location. And I've seen people do that. I've seen people pull up, get out of their car, ooh, ah, for two minutes, turn around, take a selfie, get in the car, and drive to the next one. They're rushing through their day. They're getting, we were here, pictures, and they don't even get a chance to enjoy the amazing view, the calming noise, the babbling brooks, the water rushing, and just drinking the colors and all the beauty that comes with being in nature. They miss it all. They miss the people watching, seeing men with trousers, those rubber trousers up to their chest, fly fishing, and they're doing it with their families and their children and the park RVs and mothers and daughters picking flowers and all that stuff that just makes you slow down and appreciate life. It makes leaving the park hard to do. And you miss that when you get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, because I think we do that through our day. We push through our day to just make it to the end. So when we go on vacation, guess what? We're pushing through the day just to make it to the end. And we miss the slowdown in between and life and all the things that are happening. So my little tips, I hope they were helpful for you. They will definitely be helpful for me because I plan on going back. I plan on mapping out my day. Like I said, they give us these little maps. See, this one is the Grand Teton, but the National uh, Visitor's Guide, and they have a map that looks exactly like this, except it says Yellowstone. And I'm gonna map out what it is that I wanna see. 
and I want to make sure that I hit more than just the south side because we came in on the south and we left out on the west so in that area we just got a chance to see the different bases and those were just those extremely hot streams that look like they're boiling and they smell like sulfur so it's not a pleasant smell but it is a beautiful site where the, the water is like emerald and it has such an amazing look it looks like a giant hot tub that will cook you from the inside out so you don't want to get in it but you do want to admire it and so if you'd like to see some of my work because i love to travel but i travel slash pleasure slash business because when i come back i want to take those wonderful views that i saw and i make postcards and posters to be able to bring to you so you can go along with our travels even if you're unable to make it that far so if you found these tips helpful please subscribe to my channel by hitting that notification button and subscribing hit the bell so every time i put up a video you'll be notified and you'll be able to see it and also you can go to my website and take a look at some of the work from, that I've done from this trip. And you can purchase it as a single or as bulk. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. And it is www.hdesigngrp.com. And I will put that down in the comment section below. And I hope that you just found it uh, informational and entertaining. So please watch like share subscribe all that great stuff and we will see you in the next video